Genesis 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Did you notice how the first thing the devil did in the Bible was directly questioning what God said? He didn't ask, how do you know God created the world? Or, how do you know you're the only woman God ever made for Adam? The serpent simply asked, did God say it? In biblical hermeneutics, knowledge relating to biblical interpretation, the law of first mention is incredibly significant. This law establishes patterns and themes in relation to an object, place, or person based on their first appearance in the scripture. If the devil's first attack is on what God said, then you can be guaranteed that his attacks against God's words did not end with the Garden of Eden. The objective of this series is to give you a Bible you can believe in, to give you an authoritative standard without contradiction, failure, or error, to arm Christians with the sword of the Spirit in one of the darkest times of our spiritual warfare, to show crucial differences between the King James Bible and the New Versions to show the errors of new versions and warn those of the error in continuing with them, to challenge those who call themselves pastors who do not place themselves under a final authority and to reveal their hypocrisy, and to provide a chance for repentance. So, what's wrong with quotations, my Bible? The argument is not about, I'm a better person than you because I use the King James Bible. It is about having a standard that is higher than ourselves. Can you point to one version of the Bible without errors or faults? And does it, and does it need to be quotations corrected or elaborated on with an alternative Bible or lexicon? Not resorting to my words over your words, but God's words. Can we turn to it in faith? The issue is not about preference, but about belief. Do we actually have the words of God, or do we not? Matthew 24 verse 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Did God inspire his scriptures to only lose them? How can I know things such as salvation if I do not have the Bible? If the real words of God bring sanctification, John 17 verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth, then not using the real words of God by default could not bring the same results. Sanctify means set apart or declare holy. Consecrate. Are you being truly sanctified by using versions that accommodate language to the world and that supposedly constantly need updating? Is KJV only more divisive than the alternative? Answer. You can't have division if you only have one. People used the KJV for over 300 years without questioning it was the Word of God. Then came the new versions. If the KJV is not the standard, which Bible truly is the most accurate version? Things that are different are not the same. We cannot be left with a never-ending Bible, as God is not the author of confusion. Is compromising with multiple Bible versions for the sake of quotations unity, just splintering Christendom at its own expense. 
This obviously leads to skepticism as seen with prime examples as Muslims who reject Christ based on this standard. The word of God in of itself is going to be divisive. It is extremely difficult to all agree on the same interpretation, but it is easier to do so with the same text. Agree or disagree on interpretation, at least there would be unity in one standard. So, how are we going to search the scriptures and compare these new versions with the authorized version? Here we have different categories. As you can see, we have subtle changes. Differences that recognize further interpretation can lead to doctrinal error. We have major changes. Differences that are explicitly demonstrated that teach either outright heresies or vary from original meaning. Original meaning being the King James Version, the standard. Subtle removals. Removals at key moments where further analysis will lead to doctrinal error. We have major removals. Severe exclusions that become irreconcilable to the authorized version, leading people into confusion, deception, and even possibly damnation. If you continue these verses to their logical conclusion. Verses erased from existence. Verses that didn't even stand a chance were in these new versions, where they will omit the verse in question while skipping the verse numbering. Finally, after the segments presented in this series, we will be looking at a conclusion. Appeal to new version users. If you are not willing to look at some of these differences imperatively and honestly, stop watching this channel right now and move on. If you are willing to keep an open mind and are even trying to figure out what all the fuss is about of being quotations King James only, please continue with us. While opponents to those who use the authorized version will attempt to tear this book apart, they will leave you with no volume of the Bible that will be viewed as objective and concrete. In showing the deception of these new versions and reproving them one verse at a time, you will be not left with no versions of the scriptures, as the alternative view provides, but instead will be given a standard that you can believe in, being one version of the Bible. This marks the end of our introduction. Looking forward to seeing you in the next segments. If you want to see more differences, subscribe to this channel or go to Gumroad and download list. Also on Gumroad is a KJV vs. New Tract, along with other tracts and content you can download and print. All monetary contributions are appreciated. Thank you for watching this segment, and hope this has been to your edification.